Okay, so today's video, today's lesson, we're going to start looking at the graphs of our rational functions. Remember, rational just means something that can be written as a fraction, so we're going to start looking at our graphs of these fractions. Now, you're going to find out these things are a lot more limited than some of the functions that we looked at before, and we know that because when you're dealing with a fraction, you cannot have a zero in your denominator. You know, you can never divide by zero. If you try on your calculator right now, it could be wrong, and you type two divided by zero, it's going to go nuts. It'll tell you an error or something. You can't divide something by zero, so you're going to be limited. Now, this graph, this is of the, the parent function. You know, we always start the parent function, the basic. So this would be f of x equals 1 over x. Okay, and what this is called, how we'll refer to this, is the graph of a rational function is a hyperbola. Hyperbola, H-Y-P-E-R-B-O-L-A, a hyperbola consists of two branches and that's these pretty curves here so those are your branches on your hyperbola now i just told you the graphs are going to be restricted and that means there's going to be asymptotes involved and we remember from a while back an asymptote is something you approach but never touch so it's going to get closer and closer and closer to it and add some microscope close to it but it ain't ever going to touch it so that'll be an asymptote on this function on our parent function when there's nothing extra happening here there's nothing being added or subtracted either on the denominator or out on the end your asymptotes are just your axes so we have a vertical asymptote here at x equals zero so this branch will get closer and closer and closer to it but never touch it same down here branch will get closer and closer and closer but never touch it and we'll have a horizontal asymptote right here at y equals zero so you can see it's going to level out there much like our exponential functions did going to get closer, 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 never touch it. Same thing here, going to get closer, 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 never touch it. Now, these are not going to be difficult for you to graph because you're getting pretty good at graphing functions in your graphing calculator and it can graph these, same as always, but what the calculator doesn't tell you are your asymptotes. So we're going to have to be able to learn how to figure them out. And there are different ways that these rational functions can look. This is just a parent function. It's pretty bare bones, pretty basic. But as more things start happening to it and those branches start moving around, those asymptotes will be moving around as well. So that's what we'll be spending our time learning out how to find mostly today. Okay? All right, let's get going. Let's say I want to graph the function y equals 6 over x. So let me give me another piece of graph paper up here. We'll talk about how to do this. We want to graph y equals 6 over x. Now, lucky for us starting off, this is the same as the parent function. My asymptotes are just going to be the axes because there's nothing extra happening here. We have a single term on the numerator just being divided by x, no extra junk. So my asymptotes are going to be those axes. So now I just need to find a couple of other points to draw my curves through. So if you're doing this on your graphing calculator, you'll just go to the y equals, type in 6 over x, I would do it as a fraction, and then you can go to your table and look and get you a couple more points to know where to draw your curves. Okay, I'm just going to go old school. So I know i got to be to the right over here, so I could plug a 1 in and I could plug a 2 in. And those are pretty easy for me. If I plug a 1 in, 6 divided by 1 is 6, so I'm going to have an order pair on 1, 6. If I plug a 2 in, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I'm going to have an order pair there. So let's count on every line this time since i got to, well, 1, 2, 3, yeah, since i got to go up to 6. So over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And I know that branch, what it's going to look like because we looked at the parent function. I know that it can't touch this line and it can't touch this line. So it's going to get super duper close, come through these points, and then curve out down here and get super, super close to so those asymptotes. They approach but never touch. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that branch. Oops. Let's try not to touch our asymptote. Let me erase that and see if I can just do it with a regular marker. Turned it red for some reason, but there you go. Now, so that was on the right side of my asymptote. So I'm going to pick some points to the left side of my asymptote. So that means some negative x's. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just keep it, oops, need a marker there, dummy. Keep it simple and plug in a negative 1 and a negative 2. So 6 divided by negative 1 will give me negative 6. 6 divided by negative 2 will give me negative 3. 
So we can plot those points here. I'll go left one, come on. Left one, down six. Be right down there. And then left two, down three. Be right there. Same thing, I know I can't touch that asymptote and I can't touch that asymptote. So I'm just gonna draw my branch through those. Let's see, it seems to be easier to do it this way. So it'll be going something like that. Okay, pretty basic, just about like the parent function that we looked at first, but we're gonna if we go back and look at the equation. We're gonna look at some more scenarios where there's more things happening to transform those branches, which is gonna make our asymptotes move around as well. So let's go on to the next, stepping it up. So this rational function says y equals negative 4 over x plus 2 minus 1. So obviously we've got a lot more going on here with this function. We've got more going on here. we got more going on here. So it's going to be moved around. It's not going to be nice and pretty at the origin. Our branches are not going to approach those axes as the asymptotes. Okay. So when we look like this, our rule for finding those asymptotes, we know we can never have a zero on the bottom of a fraction. We've already talked about that. You know that from when you were a little taught. So what you do to find the asymptote here is you take that bottom, set it equal to zero, and solve. So x plus two equals zero. So I know x can never be negative two. I can never touch negative two. So that is gonna be negative, we'll count on every line just to be safe, negative one, negative two. So that is going to be my vertical asymptote. And I'll always draw a dotted line there, just so as I'm drawing my branches in a minute, I know that's my asymptote, don't touch it, okay? Earlier, our asymptote was this line. Now it's moved over a little bit, okay? Now to get our horizontal asymptote, when we're in this form, our horizontal asymptote, Remember when we were transforming parabolas and all that stuff earlier, if there was stuck, something stuck on the end that always scooted it up or down? Same thing here. We got a negative one stuck on the end, so we're gonna scoot down one. So our horizontal asymptote is gonna be y equals negative one. Okay, so I wanna come down one, dot me a horizontal line through there. Okay, now, if you're choosing to graph these in your calculator, which is okay, all you have to do is type that in just like it looks and you'll be good, but you need to know these asymptotes because that might be a direct question on an ACT or on a test in here. What's your vertical asymptote? What's your horizontal asymptote? So you gotta know how to do that, okay? So you go to your calculator and get a table to get a couple extra points. I'm just gonna go old school again. Now this time, my vertical asymptote is here at negative two. So I could pick negative one and zero for my x. Okay, so we gotta plug those in here if you're choosing to do it without a calculator. So on the bottom, if I do negative one plus two, that's one. So I got negative four divided by one, that's negative four. Negative four minus one is negative five. Okay, so I'm gonna go left, let me screw it up a little bit. Left one, down five. Okay, then the other point I chose for this side was zero. So zero plus two is two. Negative four divided by two is negative two. Negative two minus one is negative three. So I'm gonna go over zero and down three. Now look at those dotted lines. That's where my branch is bordered at. That's where it's restricted at. So I got a curve through these two points. I can't touch this dotted line, that's my asymptote. I can't touch this dotted line, that's my asymptote. So that branch would look something like that. OK, 
okay? Now that's half of my hyperbola. Now I gotta figure out what the other half's gonna be. So I gotta pick some points to the left of this vertical dotted line. So it was at negative two. So I'm gonna plug in negative three and negative four. Okay, so back to my table over here, I'm plugging in negative three and negative four. Let me see my real, okay, so if I plug a negative three in, negative three plus two is negative one. Negative four divided by negative one is four. Four minus one is three. If I plug my negative four in, negative four plus two is negative two. Negative four divided by negative two is two. And two minus one is one. So I'm gonna go right, uh, left three, one back from the origin. I always start back from the origin. One, two, three, and up three. Then I'm gonna go right four and up one. Okay, so look at those two points. Look at your dotted lines that you can't touch. So that branch has to come through these two points. Can't touch that asymptote, can't touch this asymptote. So you'll get a curve looking. It crosses the axes, just not the asymptote, looking something like that. Now, what you're gonna see happening, and it's pretty cool, and what should always happen is those branches are gonna most of the time be opposite like that. They're gonna be reflections. So that's it. You could have gotten those curves from your calculator, but you've gotta know how to find your asymptotes. So in this form, we got one more form to look at next. In this form, to find your vertical asymptote, set your x equals zero to, to zero and solve. To find your horizontal asymptote, it's the extra stuff stuck on the end, okay? Pretty good looking graph there. Okay, sorry about that. Our janitor was talking about something. So this one says y equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 3. So this is the, the last of the types that we have to look at because there's a lot more stuff happening. What I mean by that is on the numerator now, you got a binomial on the numerator. On the two previous functions we looked at, you just had a constant up there, just a regular number. Now we've got a variable, we got a binomial, we've got more things happening. So you can still just type that into your calculator. It'll work, no problem, but you gotta know how to find your asymptotes. Vertical asymptote, you're gonna find the same way. So we're gonna take that denominator, x minus three, set it equal to zero and solve. So we got a vertical asymptote at x equals three. So I'm gonna count over three, one, two, three, and I'm gonna put a dotted line through that. It's my vertical asymptote. I can get close to it, but I can't touch it. Continue it on down here a little bit. Okay, now, different this time to get our horizontal asymptote. In this case, what you're gonna do to get your horizontal asymptote, is you're gonna take the coefficient of your numerator over the coefficient of your denominator. So in this case, on the numerator, we have a 2x. On the denominator, we have a 1x. So we're gonna say y equals two over one. Reduce that if you can. So you're gonna have a horizontal asymptote at y equals two. So I'm gonna go up two, put my dotted line through that. Okay, so we've got our asymptote. So if you wanted to, you could just type the rest of that into your calculator and you would be fine. It would work that way. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and Make a table like I have been to stay consistent. Let me get a new color so we can see where I'm working. So if I need to go to the right 
of this vertical asymptote, it's at one, two, three. So I'm gonna plug in um, negative four and negative five. Now you're gonna see, and if you're doing it on your calculator, you can look and see, you're gonna get a lot, some uh, much uglier numbers this time, because there's a lot more going on and you're dividing. So I've so far been uh, lucked out and got some pretty workable numbers, but I bet you these are gonna be pretty ugly. I might even grab my calculator in a minute. So on the top, two times negative four is negative eight. Negative eight plus one is negative seven. So on the bottom, negative four minus three is negative seven. Well, I said all that and I was wrong because the first one, negative seven over negative seven is one. So I'm gonna go, you know what? I just, that was dumb. I should have done a positive four and a positive five if I'm going to the right. So let's redo that with the right numbers. I apologize. I got sidetracked when I was just in with the custodian. So two times four is eight. Eight plus one is nine. So we've got a nine on the top. And then on the bottom, I need to erase that one. We'll keep looking at it. On the bottom, four minus three is one. So it still worked out pretty good. We got good whole numbers on that one anyway. So from the origin, I'm gonna go right four and up nine. So I'll be way up there. Okay, now I'm gonna plug my five in. Two times five is 10. 10 plus one is 11. Five minus three is two. So five minus three is two. So I have 11 divided by two, which I'll just be five and a half. So I'm gonna go right five, up one, two, three, four, five and a half. Okay, so remember and looking where my asymptotes are right here. So I gotta draw that branch within those. Seems to be easier to draw using this thing, so. Pretty good looking curve there. Now for my next branch, I need to go to the left of this line that's at three. So I'm just gonna pick uh, two and one. Okay, so I'm gonna plug my two in. Two is four plus one is five. Get my marker back. Two minus three is negative one. So five over negative one will give me negative five there. Two times one is two, plus one is three. One minus three is negative two, so that will be negative one and a half. So I'm gonna go right two and down five. Let me scroll down there so we can find it. Right two, down one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna go right one and down one and a half. So same thing, my curve's gotta go through those points and it's gonna stay within these asymptotes. I'm gonna pick up my marker and draw that. Very good, very good looking hyperbola, some good looking branches. One thing you'll run into, we've talked before about our calculators, they're not 4K HD, all that type of stuff that y'all are accustomed to now. So sometimes when you're typing this on your calculator, it's gonna look like they touch the asymptotes, but they really don't. Sometimes some things might look connected that really aren't. We just, we know that and, and we can make adjustments for that, okay? So tomorrow I'm gonna give you three of these to grab and they're gonna be just like these three. I'm gonna start you off with a simple one and then a medium one and then finish up with this one, just like we did in this video today. That'll be your assignment for tomorrow. Look it up.